mabuhay. This is Mr. Criminology and welcome sa ating mga pag-aaral tungkol sa research ng mga criminology students for the review of the future registered criminologists and for the repression naman ng mga registered or licensed criminologists. And for today's lesson, we'll be talking about the freedom that we have under the Civil Code of the Philippines. Let's see them one by one. Number one, under the Article 32 of the Civil Code of the Philippines, any public officers or employee or any private individual who directly or indirectly obstruct, defeats, violates, or in any manner impedes or impairs any of the following rights and liberties of another person shall be liable to the latter for damages. So, kahit sinong tao, kahit public officer pa yan, like police officer, or like private individual, o sino mang kapwa tao natin, ang directly or mag indirectly na magbabilate ng ating mga karapatan sa ating kalayaan, tatalo, ahad lang, si sira sa ating mga karapatan ng kalayaan natin ay magiging liable sa mga damages such as the following number one the freedom from religion so all of us has the freedom of religion note that freedom of religion has three principal parts ano ba yung bahaging kinakailangan malaman natin to enjoy this freedom of religion number one the non-establishment clause. We'll discuss them one by one later. Number two, the free exercise clause. And number three, the non-religious test clause. Let's see them one by one. Non-establishment clause. No law shall be made respecting the establishment of religion or prohibit the free exercise thereof. So, Walang anumang batas ng Pilipinas ang pwedeng maipasa na mag establish ng isang relihiyon that promote a state religion or national religion. Hindi rin pwede na ipagbawal ang malayang pamamahayag o pag-exercise ng ating pananamparataya o ng ating relihiyon. Number two, the free exercise clause. The free exercise and enjoyment of religious profession and worship without discrimination or preference shall forever be allowed. Yan. So, sino man sa atin ay maaring ipahayag ng malaya o ma-enjoy yung ating pamamahayag ng ating pagsasamba sa ating Diyos nang walang discrimination o preference ni man o saan man o para kanino mang grupo. Ito ay shall be forever be allowed sa bawat individual at bawat grupo ng relihiyon. Number three, non-religious test clause. No religious test yan, shall be required for the exercise of civil rights. So we must understand this three na sa gayon, we will be enjoying the freedom of religion. We also have the freedom of speech and the freedom to write for press or to maintain a periodic publication. So, these are uh, magkasama natin discuss. What are the freedom of speech and the freedom of press implies? It implies the right to freely utter and publish whatever the citizen may please. Yan. Malaya tayong ipahayag or ipublicize para newspaper kung saan man, malaya tayo kung ano man yung it seems good for us or oh, nice natin and to be protected from any responsibility from doing so so hindi tayo pwedeng kasuhan o pigilan sa paggawa ng bagay na yon pamahayag ng bagay na yon maliban except so as far as such publication from their blasphemy obscenity or scandalous character may be a public offense or as by their falsehood and malice they may injurious they may injuriously affect the standing reputation or pecuniary interest of individual yan meron lang ang limitation ng ating karapatang magpahayag 
at magsapubliko ng mga bagay-bagay kung ito ay meron ng blasphemy na content o meron mga obscenity, it contains scandalous character. It can be a public offense already. At especially if it contains falsehood and malicious that can injure the standing reputation or the interest of the individual. Yan. Sa ating kalayaan, may limitasyon at merong responsibilidad at merong dapat tayong iiwasan. As long as we don't violate and contains those mentioned below, you can freely express, you can freely speak, you can freely uh, exercise your freedom for press and to maintain your periodic publication. You also have the freedom from arbitrary or illegal detention. Ito na, yung the rights of our liberty. What is the difference between arbitrary detention and illegal detention? Number one, arbitrary detention, unlawful detention of a public uh, person, I mean, unlawful detention of a person committed by a public official or officer. Ito yung illegal, unlawful na pag re-restrain sa'yo, pagkulong sa'yo, ito yung uh, pag-handle sa'yo ng isang public officer or official, gaya ng polis o empleyado ng gobyerno, na wala siyang lawful na dahilan. Wala siyang sapat legal na dahilan para ikaw ay ikulong or iput into custody. That is arbitrary detention. While on the other hand, kapag ka naman illegal detention, unlawful detention naman, dinetain ka, ng isang private individual nang wala siyang sapat na dahilan o lawful na dahilan. So, walang sino man ang pwedeng uh, mag-detain sa'yo maliban the law pro provides for that action. Note, arbitrary detention under the Article 124 of the Revised Penal Code should be further differentiated from the delay in the delivery of detained person to proper judicial authority under the Article 125 of the same code. So, meron pa tayong sa arbitrary detention kasi meron pang time span according sa gravity ng offense committed that I will be providing later. In arbitrary detention also, it is sufficient that a public officer or employee without legal grounds detain a person. Hence, an important element is detention without any legal grounds. So, Ang pinaka-keyword lang sa arbitrary detention, ikaw ay dinitain ng walang legal na basihan. Yan ang hinahanap natin. In the delay of the delivery of the detained person to the proper judicial authority, the detention is with some legal grounds, however. It became unlawful only when the public officer or employee shall fail to deliver such person to proper judicial authority within the period prescribed by Article 125 of the Revised Penal Code. Nagiging unlawful ang iyong uh, pag-deliver ng hinuli mo, dinitain mong person sa judicial authority. Kapag ka, bagamat legal yung ground mo, pero na-delay ka sa pagdadala sa kanya with the provided time under Article 125, which are as follows. Letter A, 12 hours ang pwede mong pag-detain sa isang tao when you are a public official or officer pag uh, ang kanyang offense na kinumit is punishable only by light penalties. So pag, pag light penalties lang yan, hanggang 12 hours mo lang siyang pwedeng i-handle or detain hanggang madala mo siya sa proper judicial authority. Letter B is 18 hours naman kapag ka ang crime or offense niya is punishable by already correctional penalties. And 36 hours for the crimes or offenses punishable by afflicted or capital punishment or penalty or their equivalent. So, 12, 18, and 36 hours ang inahanat nating oras in detaining a person when you are a public official or officer to avoid the commission of crime of arbitrary detention. We also have the freedom of suffrage. Ang kalayaan nating bumoto. Kalayaan magluklok ng opisyales na mamumuno, mamahala sa atin. It is based upon the theory that people who bear the burden of government should share in the privilege of choosing 
the officials of that government. So, kung kasama ang tao sa pagpapasan ng mga kailangan, mga pangangailangan ng gobyerno, kagaya ng mga taxes, kailangan din niya ma-enjoy ang kanyang pribilehiyo na magluklok din naman ng mga mamumuno sa kanyang pamahalaan. The right against deprivation of property without due process of law. Hindi pwede pagkait sa'yo ang iyong ari-arian nang walang due process of law. Ibig sabihin, hindi dumaan sa legal na proseso. The right to adjust compensation when private property is taken for public use. So, hindi pwede pagkait sa'yo na magmay-ari ka. Pangalawa, may karapatan ka din naman tumanggap ng kabayaran kapag ka yung pribadong pag-aari mo ay kukunin para magamit ng publiko. So, may power ang gobyerno na kunin ang ating ari-arian basta gagamitin ito sa pampublikong paggamit. The right to adjust compensation when private property is taken for public use. Can private property be taken from its owner? Yan. Pwede bang kunin sa'yo yung private property mo bilang may, nagmamay-ari? Ang sagot dyan, yes. But subject to the following conditions. Ano yung mga conditions na dapat mamit para legal na makuha sa'yo yung ari-arian mo? Number one, that the private property is taken from public use. Yan. Hindi pwedeng kukunin sa'yo at privado ang paggagamitan. Isang tao, isang kumpanya o ilang tao. Dapat pampubliko. Pangalawa, that the owner of the said property should be paid just compensation. Dapat babayaran ang nagmamay-ari nung privadong pag-aari ng sapat tama na pagkabayaran. Usually kung ano yung rate ng assessor's office ng lugar na yon. That the due process of law shall be observed in taking of the said property. Dapat merong legal na prosesong ginawa nung kukunin yan, hindi yan basta-basta lamang. This should be due process. And number four, that the taking shall be only exercised by the state or those whom the power has been lawfully delegated. Dapat ang kukuha ng yung property, privately owned property, ay dapat ang gobyerno, ang pamahalaan, ang estado, or yung representative niya, o yung merong legal uh, delegated authority or power ang siya magtatransak dyan. What is eminent domain? Ito yung power ng gobyerno, the power to eminent domain. This is the right of the state to acquire private property for, for public use upon the payment of just compensation. This can also be exercised by those to whom the said has been lawfully delegated. So, yan ang kapangyarihan o karapatan ng Estado na kunin ang mga pribadong ari-arian basta babayaran niya ng tama. At pwedeng exercise lang ito kung kanino siya dinelegate ang authority na gagawin ito. Usually, kung sino yung public official government uh, employee na merong vested authority from the government, legal authority, ang siyang gagawa lamang ito in the name of the Republic of the Philippines. The right to the equal protection of laws. Yan din. Ano ibig sabihin ng equal protection of laws? It is a constitutional guarantee that all persons are equal before the law. Walang mataas, walang mababa, walang malit, walang malaki. Which means that what the Constitution guarantees is not absolute equality. Yan. Of course, hindi yan absolute na pagkakapantay-pantay. Pero of all individuals, but only equality of opportunity or of protection given by the law to person or classes of persons who are similarly situated and who therefore belong to a certain classification made by law. Ang gagaranti ng Constitution sa atin ay pagkakapantay-pantay ng oportunidad at pagkakapantay-pantay ng protection na ibibigay sa bawat tao, classes o sa bawat uh, individual sa ating pamahalaan. Yan ang equal protection of laws. Note, the constitutional guarantee of equal protection is not violated by reasonable classification which is based on substantial distinction. Hindi daw ito na be-break o na-violate kapag mayroong reasonable classifications. 
na ginagawa ang gobyerno. At meron siyang tamang basihan naman in doing so. The right to be secured in one's person's house, papers, and effects against unreasonable searches and seizures. Yan. May karapatan tayo, hindi lang sa ating kalayaan, kundi sa ating pagkatao, sa ating tahanan, tirahan, sa ating mga dokumento, at sa mga unreasonable searches and seizures. Hindi basta-basta pwedeng pumasok ang sino man, maghalughog at magkumpis ka ng mga pag-aari natin. Note, it is a protection of, number one, let's remember this, the sanctity and privacy of person himself and of the inviolability of the person's home and his possession. The law, the constitution, the government respect yung sanctity ng ating privacy, ng ating pagkatao, at ng ating tahanan at ng ating ari-arian. Tandaan ninyo, mahalaga, sagrado ang ating pagkatao, ating tahanan, mga pag-aari. Hindi yan pwedeng i-violate ng sino man. Next, the liberty of abode and of changing the same. What is the meaning of liberty of abode and travel? It is the right of a person to have his home or to maintain or change his home, dwelling, residence, or habitation in whatever place he has chosen within the limits prescribed by law. So, may karapatan ng bawat tao na magmay-ari ng bahay, ng tahanan niya, mag-maintain o baguhin ang kanyang tahanan, tirahan, residensya, or kung saan siya mabubuhay. Kung saan niya man lugar na nanaisin at pipiliin. Siyempre, with the limitations prescribed by the law. As long as he or she is not violating the provisions of law, malaya siyang manirahan saan man niya gustuin. And to go where he please without interference from anyone, except in the interest of national security, public safety, or public health, has may be provided by law. Yan. Malaya din siya na pumunta ng walang pag uh, ahad lang, walang pag interfere sa kanya. Maliban lang, uh, meron tayong reason ang gobyerno for the national security kapag ka, uh, nakataya na seguridad ng ating bansa or public safety. Halimbawa, may, may karamdaman ka, may virus ka, may pandemic. Yan. Or may public health issues na pinubayad ng law kagaya ng pandemic na COVID-19. Yan ang pwedeng dahilan ng government to put some restriction and interference with our travels. But generally, nobody can restrict us, interfere wherever we want to go. Note, the, ex the exceptions mentioned means that the liberty of the abode and travel is subject to the police power of the state. Yan. Kung yung ari-arian mong pwedeng kunin ng gobyerno with due process and payment is the power to imminent domain, the, prob the power naman to uh, interfere and limit our travel and abode is subject to the police power of the state because that is inherent to the state to have the police power. And the third one, to add, bukod sa police power, sa power of imminent domain, meron pang power of taxation ng gobyerno kapangyarihan na maningil ng buwis sa kanyang nasasakupan. The privacy of communication and correspondence, which is the exercise, uh, what is the exemption to this right? The privacy of communication and correspondence shall be inviolable except upon lawful order of the court or when public safety or order requires otherwise as prescribed by law. Walang sino man ang may karapatang na panghimasukan ang pampribadong pag-uusap, komunikasyon, correspondence ng bawat tao. Yung wiretapping bawal yan. Maliban lang kapag ka may order, lawful order ng korte, kagaya ng pagka-terrorism, pwede ang korte mag-issue ng uh, permit sa law enforcement agency na mag-wiretap for surveillance purposes. But syempre, meron niyang undergo ng due process pa din yan. May probable cause yan. And nire-require yan, pinaprescribe ng ating batas. Basta walang nilalabag at pinapermit siya ng batas. What is the effect if privacy of communication and correspondence is violated? Ano magiging epekto kapag ka na-violate ang ating privacy 
with communication and correspondence. Any evidence obtained in violation of this shall be inadmissible for any purpose in any proceeding under Section 3, Article 2 ng ating Constitution. Paano daw yan? Lahat ng magagather nila illegally obtained evidence na pag-uusap, communication, correspondence natin, hindi yan tatanggapin ng korte. Kasi nga, part yan ng fruit of the poisonous tree doctrine. Right to become a member of the association or societies for the purpose not contrary to law. Walang pwedeng humad lang sa'yo na maging member ka ng mga associations, societies, basta hindi laban sa batas o labag sa batas. Note, the right of the people, including those employed in public and private sectors, to form unions, pwede rin, associations or societies for the purpose not contrary to law, shall, be, shall not be abridged. Yan. May karapatan ng bawat tao, pati yung mga employees, na mag-form ng mga unions, sectors, associations, societies nila. Basta ang ating laging final ground dyan, prescribed by the law or not contrary to the provisions of our laws. The right to take part in peaceable assemblies, not petition to, uh, to petition the government for redress of grievances. May karapatan din tayong makibahagi sa mga mapayapang pagtitipon para magbigay ng petition sa gobyerno ayon sa mga inahing, mga pangangailangan ng mga mamamayan. The exercise thereof shall not be made to depend upon the issuance of any permit. However, it may be subject to regulations, not prohibitions by the state as to when and where it should be held. Yan. Dapat um, pwede rin magbibigay ng permit o provide ng gobyerno kung saan pwede at kailan pwedeng gawin ang bagay na yan. Okay? Pwede pa rin tayong magbigay ng grievances sa state natin. Basta peaceable assembly and permitted by the state, of course. The right to be free from any involuntary servitude in any form. So, malaya tayo maging uh, wag tayong pilitin na maglingkod, magtrabaho. No one should be com uh, compiled to or to force to work without his or her will. Walang sino man sa atin ang pwedeng persahin na magtrabaho na labag sa kagustuhan ng isang tao. If you will work because you want to work, no one can force you. The right of the accused against excessive bail. Yan. Yung mga kusado sa korte, kahit ikaw ay nakadetain na, may karapatan ka na na wag kang maabuso na bigyan ka ng excessive bail. Nandahan niya walang standard rate ang bail. Yan ay depende sa kaso, sa bigat ng ebidensya, sa uh, kakayahan ng tao na ako nang akusado, doon determine ng judge kung magkano yung bail. Pero excessive bail, you have the right against that if you're accused. The rationale behind the right to bail is that the accused is presumed innocent until his guilt is proven beyond reasonable doubt by final judgment. Because we have the constitutional provision of the um, tawag dito, presumption of innocence. Hindi ka pwedeng I-declare na guilty maliban na patunayan ka ng korte ng walang kahit kaunting pagdududa. You are proven guilty beyond reasonable doubt lang dapat. 1987, Constitution prohibit excessive bail because it affect, it is a denial of bail already. The right of the accused to be heard by himself and counsel to be informed of the nature of the, and cause of the accusation against him to have a speedy and public trial, to meet the witnesses face-to-face, -face, and to have compulsory process to secure the attendance of witness in his behalf. Yan. May karapatan ang usado na mapakinggan niya mismo ang kan kanyang counsel at ang kanyang abogado at ma-inform siya kung ano ba ang nature at sanhi ng mga accusation laban sa kanya at to have a speedy public trial at Da, karapatan din niya makaharap yung mga witnesses face to face and compulsory process to secure the attendance of witnesses in his behalf. Yung mga testigo niya dapat pa rin karapatan niyang uh, makasama sa proseso. 
We also have the right of the accused to be heard. Yan. Ano yan? Ano ibig sabihin nito? This is the right of a person under custodial investigation to have a competent and independent counsel preparably of his own choice. So, karapatan niyang pumili ng kanyang abogado magtatanggol sa kanya. And of course, if he cannot afford one, the government may, may appoint and provide one, provide one for him. Meron tayong mga PAO, Public Attorney's Office. The, office, the purpose of the right to counsel during custodial investigation is to preclude the slightest coercion as would lead the accused to admit something else. Yan. Bakit kinakailangan nandiyan na kanyang counsel sa investigation? Kasi iniiwasan natin, baka mapwersa lang ang akusado na aminin ang isang bagay na hindi naman talaga. We also have the freedom from being compelled to be a witness against oneself. We have the right against self-incrimination. May karapatan kang maging malaya na huwag kang maging testigo na, la 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 na laban sa sarili mo. Or from being forced to confess guilt. Yan. Nobody can force you na aminin mo ang pagiging guilty sa hindi mo namang ginawa or para mapapwersa ka lang aminin ang isang bagay. Or from being induced by a promise or of immunity or reward to make such confession except when the person confessing become a state witness. Wala rin pwedeng, uh, hindi ka pwedeng dayain o akitin, persahin, na mag-confess ka kasi merong reward na kapalit. Kagaya ng may immune ka sa posibleng magiging uh, penalty o pwedeng outcome ng kaso. Maliban, you will be uh, granted to become a state witness. Pero pag state witness ka, syempre, may mga rules din dyan. Dapat hindi ikaw ang principal. Note, this is the right against self-incrimination as what I mentioned a while back. We also have the freedom to exercise fine, uh, freedom from excessive fines or cruel and unusual punishment unless the same is imposed or inflicted in accordance with the stat statute which has not been judicially declared unconstitutional. So, hindi ka pwedeng parusahan ng higit pa. Excessive fines or cruel, unusual punishment. Dapat lawfully allowed lang ang pwedeng ibigay sa'yo. Hindi pwedeng impose sa'yo o implicate sa'yo yung mga bagay na beyond judicial. Uh, pag, hindi, pag yan, hanggat hindi yan dinideclare ng korte, ng judiciary system ng batas, na unconstitutional allowed yan. Pero hanggat hindi naman pinepermit ng, ng batas yan, hindi yan allowed. Yan ang ating basihan. We are living under the rules of law. The rules of the Constitution as the highest law of the land and we have the uh, provisions of our revised penal code. We have the special laws such as presidential decrees, uh, mga executive orders, ang mga special laws like Republic Acts natin and the ordinances naman ng mga cities natin. When, when a fine is to be considered excessive, yan. Yung bang fine, kailan ba mas sabing excessive yan? When it is clearly shown that the nature of the violation compared with the fine is disproportionate or if it exceeds the utmost limit of the punishment which the vindication of the law demands. Masabi mong excessive ang fine kapag ka hindi balanse yung laki ng offense doon sa laki ng fine. Dapat commensurate, dapat akma ang level niyan. One more thing, kapag ka yung pagka na judge na guilty ka, exceed doon sa penalty mo lang o sa iyong punishment, yung fine na binibigay lampas doon sa dapat mong isuffer. That will be excessive fine. Punishment is cruel if it is flagrantly and plainly oppressive, wholly disproportionate to the nature of the offense has to shock the moral sense of the community. Yan. Cruel naman yan, pagka flagrantly yan, uh, parang mala uh, torture, pagka yan ay oppressive masyado, hindi akma din doon sa kanyang offense na nagawa, that it even violates the moral sense ng community. They will, it will shock the community. Bakit yun ginawa sa kanya? Those are considered are cruel in giving the punishment. 
freedom to access to the courts. Yan, kalayaan na ma-access tayo ng korte. Free access to the courts and quasi-judicial bodies. And adequate legal assistance shall not be denied to any person by reason of poverty. Section 11, Article 3 of the 1987 Philippine Constitution. So, hindi pwede maging dahilan na mahirap ka na hindi ka na makaka-access sa korte. Hindi ka maka-assist sa mga quasi-judicial bodies para mga semi-courts. Yan. O hindi ka pwedeng mabigyan ng assistance legally ng gobyerno. Kaya nga, pagka binigay yung Miranda rights mo, you have the right to counsel. You have the right for an attorney. If you cannot, you can, you have the right to choose sa gusto mo. Pero kung hindi mo kaya, the government must provide one for you, will provide one for you. That is your freedom to access the court. In any of the cases referred to in this article, whether or not the dependence action or omission constitute a criminal offense, the aggrieved party has the right to commence an entirely separate and distinct civil action for damages and for other relief such civil action shall proceed independently of any criminal prosecution if the latter be instituted and may be proven by the preponderance of evidence. Yan. Kapag ka sa, sa access ng freedom sa court, access to court ng isang tao, ay dapat ihiwalay daw, pwede daw maging hiwalay yung kanyang criminal offense doon sa civil actions or responsibility niya. Paano daw ito? Pwede separate yung criminal case doon sa civil case niya. Na yung civil case niya can proceed independently. Pwede siyang ihir ng korte na separate para yung kanyang ma-prove lang sa kanya is preponderance of evidence. Kasi sa criminal case, ang rules ng korte para patunayan ka may sala is guilty beyond reasonable doubt. Pag civil case naman, preponderance of evidence. The more weight of evidence, the more chance na ikaw manalo sa kaso. So it can be heard independently, separately. Yan ang provision sa akusado. The indemnity shall include the moral damages. Exemplary damages may also be adjudicated. The responsibility herein set forth is not demandable from a judge unless his act or omission constitute a violation of the penal code or other penal statutes. Yan. So, for now, yun muna yung ating mga pinag-aralan. So, hope kahit paano, the common freedoms, the inherent freedoms that we must enjoy under the Civil Code of the Philippines, of course, provided also by our Philippine Constitution and the statutes of the country, Hope pwede paano nakadagdag sa knowledge natin. Thank you very much. Mabuhay. Jesus saves. To God be the glory.